thanks a lot. Great to be here. Um, especially proud since it's my hometown and I was raised in Malmo. And uh, I said when I came in the last time I was here in this place, uh, I, was not a very, I was not very smart. I was probably a lot more intoxicated than I am now. Um, so hopefully I learned a thing or two um, on the way. Um, so great to be here. And uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about the ebook industry and especially how we consume books um, in this kind of new digital age. And I come from a company out of Berlin called Readmill. So yeah, as I said, um, raised in Malmo. So um, I'm, this is uh, especially nerve wracking for me to stand on this stage, I think. Um, I've done a lot of different things, but all of them has kind of gravitated towards this amazing city, which is Berlin. Um, and um, I went there specifically to build um, this team, which is a team of uh, 13 people now from six different nationalities. Um, and we came together to build something that would change the way we read books on digital devices and on screens. Um, and we call that thing Readmail. So if we jump forward to two and a half years, um, we're now available on a range of different devices um, with hundreds of thousands of users spending millions of minutes reading on these devices um, in our apps every month. Um, but there was a big question when we started, like, what's, what's going to happen with reading? Um, what's going to be the device where people are going to read books going forward? Um, the, when we started in 2011, the e-reader been, had been out for a couple of years, especially uh, people were focused on the Kindle. Uh, the iPad had just been released, um, and the iPhone obviously was the phone that everybody was talking about. Um, but there was this feeling that when you're talking to ebook people, everybody was like, yeah, the, 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 e, the e ink reader, the e reader, that's, that's where everybody's going to um, spend time reading books going forward. Um, but we always thought they were wrong. Um, we thought it was something different. It turns out that we were wrong as well. Um, so let's see what actually happened. So the rate of change in the book industry has been really tremendous over the last couple of years. Um, I mean, the book is over 2,500 years old, right? But it's only in the last 25 years um, we have seen a lot of the big milestones that's being passed that has changed the industry forever. Uh, the paperback, for example, 150 years old. Then we saw uh, Adobe's portable document format come along, um, which is a big milestone. It's still one of the leading formats for publishing today. Um, and then obviously 10 years ago, e-reader came along for the first time. Um, and then just four years ago, we saw um, apps. And when we launched our product, there were over 28,000 ebook apps in the Apple App Store only for uh, iPhones and, and, and iPads, which I think is quite astonishing. Um, so what's happening with the market then? What's, what's happening to ebooks? Are they taking over? Um, the short answer is yes, they are taking over. Um, print and, and audiobook sales has been in steady decline since 2008, whilst ebooks has been on an imp impressive growth curve. Uh, I think that in the US now, ebooks account for 20% uh, of the global trade book market, which is like 3 billion out of a $15 billion market. So it's quite impressive what happened over the last couple of years. Um, and what about the e readers? They're going through the roof as well, right? Well, it looked like there were in 2011. Everybody was crazy about the Kindle. Everybody was crazy about the choices that were out there. And, uh, everybody was like, wow, it's so good. Uh, I can sit on it and I, I'm not dis disturbed by anything else. I can just spend time reading. But something happened in 2012. There was actually a huge, a jaw-dropping drop in sales. Um, actually, so much as 36%. People are usually saying, like, oh, yeah, it's because of the update frequency. You know, there's not so many more features that are brought out and things like that. So I don't have to upgrade every year or every second year as we do with phones and tablets and things like that. But I actually think there is more to that story um, than just that thing. So if we take a look at the growth of e-readers over the last three years um, and compare that with tablets, we can easily see that, wow, okay, wait, this started in 2010 approximately in the same ballpark, 
But what happened 2011 and 2012 is crazy, right? Um, now there are tons of more tablets available, and people are buying them a lot faster than they are doing e-readers. And this is quite crazy because, I mean, the price point for a tablet is actually still quite high. When the iPad was introduced, it was, I think, $499, uh, whilst the Kindle, the cheapest model, was $139. So there's kind of a big of a difference, right? And there's also seemingly less choice in the tablet market. Um, I mean, there are kind of Samsung Galaxies, there were BlackBerry tablets, but none of them were specifically popular. Um, uh, the iPad was kind of uh, the one that people were buying. So from this graph, we can definitely see that iPad is eating Kindle for lunch, basically. Um, but there is obviously a third category of devices that would put both of these growth numbers to big shame, and that's phones. Uh, smartphones, I mean, the growth has been just tremendous. I think nobody could see the amount of growth that we've seen in that market. Um, just for reference, in 2012, there were five times as many tablets shipped as there were e-readers, and there were 40 times as many phones shipped in 2012. So uh, uh, a very, very, very big difference. Um, but why am I talking about phones? Nobody reads books on phones, or do they? When, if somebody would have asked me three years ago, like, oh, what do you think about like, uh, e-book apps for iPhones and Android phones and so on, I would have said, like, yeah, eh, I don't think so. But things have happened since then, especially on this, um, uh, when you're talking about screens. And, and especially when we're talking about pixel density. So the amount of pixel that pixels that actually fit on the screen. With the current iPhone, the latest model, there's five times as many pixels on roughly the same screen that was in the uh, previous model. So the amount of pixels that fit on these screens has really gone through the roof. Um, and it might not seem like a game changer when you're talking about like features for phones, how many pixels there are on the screen, but for reading it definitely is. When you're spending tons of time with your eyes flicking up and down on the screen, it matters a lot. But let me take a local example. Uh, for those of you that don't know what this uh, building is, this is Kronprinsen. It was the skyscraper in Malmo when I was growing up, like before they built that twisted thing in, down in the harbor. Uh, and it just so happens that it's built out of small squares or pixels, as you can see in the top left corner. And uh, you can also see that the building has kind of a nice gradient, very futuristic, right? It's a very impressive skyscraper, I have to say. Um, it just so happens to fill Kronprinsen with pixels or with these squares, you need 1.9 million of them. Um, which means that if you take off the sides and you only take the, the frontal side on it, it's about the same amount of pixels that's being used in an iPhone 5. Uh, so around 750,000 pixels. Um, so if you, were, if you could imagine these amount of squares to actually fit on one iPhone 5, I think that's quite impressive. So if you want to read a book in the city, you should read it on Chrome Prince, and I think it will be, the resolution will be amazing. OK, let's take a look at some more data. Um, just to kind of set the, set the stage a little bit, that Readmill is not like some crazy uh, uh, company where we are uh, very big in some country that don't have phones or don't have tablets or something like that. We can see that it's slightly more popular on tablets. Uh, we have a 60-40% male-female split. 35% of users are 25 to 34, and we're biggest in the US. 25% of our users are from the US, and then Germany is um, following up after that. So it's kind of a normal uh, demographic, I would say. But if we compare the engagement across tablets and phones on ReadMill today, a pretty weird picture emerges, I think. Um, if we start by look, we have tons of signals for engagement on our platform, right? So uh, I'll go through them one by one. Um, let's start with use frequency. So People use their phones much often for reading than they do the tablets. And it's kind of a no-brainer, right? I mean, you carry the phone with you all the time, and like, it's, it's there, it's convenient, right? So not a total no-brainer. People also spend more time in the phone than they do in the tablet. Um, and 
I mean, since you carry it with you all the time, it's, yeah, of course you will also spend more time. Um, phone users also spend more time reading per book. So it actually takes them a little bit longer to finish the book than it does on the tablet, which is also kind of fair enough. Um, it's a smaller screen. It takes maybe a little bit longer to read on it. But then, when, then it starts getting really, really interesting. And this is something that caught us by total surprise. Phone users have more books in their library. They share more quotes. They write more comments. They start reading more books. They finish reading more books. They, have more, they follow more people. They have more followers. The only thing that they're actually doing less than tablet users is spend time on the web. And f for us, uh, the only thing that kind of stands out here is uh, the amount of time that people are spending, um, uh, more time they're spending in the book, so compared to um, phone and tablet. But it's actually not that big of a difference. It's only kind of a 10% difference. So if you're spending five hours in the book, it's not that much more time to finish it on a phone. Uh, since you can use it more often, it will probably lead to you finishing books um, in a faster pace calendar time, which we'll come back to. So how unlikely it might seem there seems to be a clear winner here for us, which is the phone, something that we could have never guessed two to three years ago. Uh, on second place, definitely the tablet. It's growing like wildfire. And third, runner-up, well, e-reader, sorry, you're out. Better luck next year. One really good thing about the two winners is that they have amazing platforms, platforms where you can build apps upon, apps that can let you track user behavior over time. So how do we actually read books, or when do we have dinner in Germany? Because we can see that quite clearly. So the first graph is people actively reading um, across the day, uh, and the bottom graph is the amount of time they're spending. So there are a few things here that really fast stands out. First of all, there is no explicit dinner time in the US, or we know exactly when Germans have dinner. Uh, it struck us by total surprise that uh, it seems to, that Americans have a, you know, a, a sandwich in their mouth uh, uh, and reading all through dinner time. It just increases until they go to bed. The second uh, funny thing is like the two bumps in the be beginning of the German graph on the top graph. If anybody can guess what that is. No wild guesses. We think it's the commute. There is two bumps, one at 7 a.m. and one at 10 a.m. And we'll see more proof that this probably is the commute um, later on. And last but not least, it seems like Americans go to bed or start going to bed earlier, uh, or at least to do something else before they go to bed than reading. So obviously, everything else is more boring. Um, if we drill down a little further, we can see more proof that uh, this is the commute, right? Um, we can see mobile taking off, or phones taking off really fast in the beginning of the day. And then kind of they, gr they grow uh, at the same pace, and then tablets taking over in the evening, which kind of fits the mental model of tablets, right? You have them at home, and you sit on your couch and read and so on. Um, so it fits the mental model. Um, but mobile is much bigger, uh, much bigger if you compare it to the US where there are a lot more tablets. Um, and here, we actually see a commute bump as well, but only on phones. So this also strengthens the case that like tablets, it's nothing you bring along, uh, maybe on the subway or something like that. Uh, hopefully, Americans don't read and drive. I think that would be a bad idea. Um, and then we can see them grow kind of similarly um, until like tablets eclipse for a short while at 8 p.m where uh, maybe you sit in the couch and like uh, have a glass of wine and read a book in this romanticized picture. Um, so lastly, I just want to show you one more thing, which is a question that we get asked a lot. How long does it take for the average person to actually finish a book? And are we faster than the Americans or not? OK, average Americans takes about a month to finish a book calendar time, right? Uh, they're slightly faster uh, on the phone, actually, um, than on the tablet. Um, and this is calendar time, not effective time. Um, 
So since they're reading a lot more often on the phone, well, then uh, they can finish books faster. So million dollar question. No, we're slower than the Americans. It's terrible, especially on tablets. Um, so actually, if you look at this graph, uh, Americans have the time to finish one more book a year, um, which is definitely not good. We need to shape up. Uh, we definitely need to shape up and read more. Or as you can see, phones are exactly similar. So we just scrap tablets in, in Germany in general and just go with phones. So this was uh, just a little scratch on the surface of data that we can generate and we can analyze in how people are consuming books and how their reading behavior looks like. And it's super exciting to play a very, very small part in making the publishing industry a little bit more data driven. So if you want to check out Readmill and see what we do and try out our apps, check us out on readmill.com. Thank you so much.